Hi guys, this is Extreme Death Man. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Thanks for visiting. I'm Extreme Dev Man. This is the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XC, not the XC. And I'm going to concentrate on the XC today just to get it out of the way. I'm not going to talk about the XE much, so let's just get started. But clarification first. I'm an amateur and still learning. I placed the microphone in a bad spot so there's a bit of a wind noise and the audio sounds a little bit off. I hope you don't mind and still can enjoy this review. First up is the engine. It's a twin engine with a special scrambler tune as Triumph states. It's a 1200cc Bonwheel twin. Has about 90 horsepower or so 98, uh, 89 brake horsepowers. Uh, and 110 newton meters, which makes this a very torquey twin, and it actually feels very torquey. You barely ever need to exceed 5000 rpm with this engine, and uh, this engine is just made for traveling and made for off roading, to be honest. So, the engine is a twin, and first thing you notice, first thing everybody notices, is the manifolds and the exhaust. And just to get it out of the way, Yes, it does get warm. Yes, you shouldn't be squidding unless you want new skin every day or want to burn off your skin every day. But no, if you're wearing at least the motorcycle jeans, this shouldn't be a problem. And it isn't a problem as I figured today. Um, it gets warm, but it doesn't burn you. Now the engine doesn't consume much fuel. I did four liters on 100 kilometers. I did do sporty parts and more touring parts, but uh, you might be able to gain uh, a higher mileage or a lower mileage, depending. Um, with the 16 liter tank, this doesn't sound much, but it's actually okay. You can do 400 kilometers, maybe 350 average. Um, but uh, for this bike, it's really not bad. It's really good for a twin. 1200 cc this is okay and also the fuel tank is quite narrow here the entire bike is narrow so off-roading uh, you need a narrow bike you don't want to push around all that weight and all this waste and uh, this just makes the bike more capable for easy handling Now the engine is a liquid-cooled 8-valve SOHC engine. It does have a, I need to read it off, multi-point sequential electronic fuel injection. Uh, it does have a traditional six-gear uh, transmission, which does not include a quick shifter, but to be honest, you don't need a quick shifter on this transmission. The gearbox is super smooth and super easy to handle. I had no complaints. It's really great. And not to forget to mention the crank angle, it's at 270 degrees. So, um, as I said, this is not a parallel twin which moves, which has the piston move parallel, but they move counterwise, making the sound, I give you an example now, really great. Next up is the frame, tubular steel with aluminum cradle, looks awesome, makes the bike very sturdy. You also get this protection down here to the engine for off-roading. This 
swing arm is twin sided. It features a dual shock from Poland. Um, the two shocks can be adjusted fully, dampening, preload, and they do have a piggyback reservoir. Just this one is ne next to the exhaust, the other one is uh, more easily visible. Uh, the suspension in the back is quite firm as it is in the front, a show off for it. Back has 200 millimeters uh, suspension travel, front also. And uh, yeah, it's quite firm, but you need that for off roading performance. On the street, it is a bit hard, but you can co op with it. It doesn't bother you too much. It still makes the bike very stable. Just uh, a little, you know, just a little minus on the comfort. So, not too bad. Um, the off roading is great. I did some off roading, and uh, I'm not the biggest off roader, I'm not the most experienced off roader, but for that little experience that I have for off roading, this bike is awesome. It's really great, the suspension is great. The lock tires uh, do their job. Metzler Tour is next. Um, absolutely great. Let's talk about rims, as we mentioned tires already. Laced rims uh, in the back 17 inches, in the front 21 inches. Um, of course, as always, this needs a, needs a little bit of initial pressure when you turn into corners. But once you've got the corner, the bike is super stable. So, no complaints here, it's really good. The brakes are from Brembo. These are two piston floating caliper in the back, a 250mm disc. In the front we have twin 320mm discs, Brembo M50 four piston brakes. And I tell you, when you engage those brakes, you have the feeling your brain comes out of your nose. They really do bite hard and harsh and they really stop you in no time. Might be a problem in off-roading, but there is a solution for that, which is the riding mode, off-road. But I'm going to talk about the riding modes a little bit later. And the dashboard is a TFT display. Actually, No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Just a train passing by, so I had to do a little break. Really, nigga? Um, I want to mention the TFT display dashboard first. Um, no, actually, let let me tell you, um, the headlights and the fog lights. This bike actually has an option to fit fog lights on, which cost a bit extra, but uh, I'm pretty sure they do their job as they do on the BMW R1200 GS. They look neat. Um, all of it is LED, so even the blinkers here are LED and the backlights are LED and I think this is state of the art, it should be on any bike on the market at the moment. I know there are some Italian bikes which do not have LED headlights, but that's a story on its own. So let's mention the TFT display. The TFT display um, is actually three-parted, it's a multifunctional instrument. It has a digital speedometer, trip computer, a fuel consumption computer. It has uh, two different styles. One is Kronos, the other one is Quartz. Um, I like it, it's customizable. And you can also turn off the display infos or just show them partially, which is okay for me. I didn't use that option. I kept the info on all the time. You get trip computer, as I mentioned. Um, there's a clock, gear position indicator, uh, everything you can ask for. Now, we have to mention, or I have to mention, <laughs> I'm alone, I'm not schizophrenic. Um, there is a bit of a problem with the three parts of the display. They're actually quite small and the numbers, all the information is displayed in quite a small fashion. So maybe if you're not, if you don't have the best eyes, it might be difficult for you to read. The display, of course, changes its color if uh, sunlight or not is shining on it. If it's dark or bright day, um, yeah. But 
maybe the numbers are a bit too small. I had no problem, but I can imagine that some folks will have. So, riding modes, let's talk about those. The riding modes are an individual rider mode, then there is rain, which I had the joy of trying for a few kilometers because there was a single big uh, cloud which just pissed on me and my cameraman. But whatever, I just engaged uh, rain mode and to be honest, you won't slide. Even if you're a bit nasty on the throttle, uh, rain mode does have control. Then there is the road mode, which is okay for most of your riding, everyday riding, riding to work, and so on and so on. Sport mode, of course you want to engage sport mode when you're on a mountain pass or a twisty road and want to have a little bit of fire under your butt. And there is the off-road mode, and that's the solution to what I mentioned earlier. Um, off-road mode makes the throttle, which is actually already very soft and not so direct in response. It makes it even softer, lets the ABS and the traction control be more subtle and allow for more off-roading, for more slides and slips. And I have to tell you, as I said, I'm not the greatest off-roader, but I've listened to other people riding this bike and they, some of them are really professional in off-roading and they told me this bike is absolutely great for off-roading. Performance on the street, from my perspective, perspective, oh, excuse me, um, is superb, really superb, a light, agile bike, easy to ride, comfortable, but also off-roading the XC the XE is another story, it has longer suspension travel, has a longer swing arm, gets an off-road pro mode and so on and so on. It's made for like the E-State extremer conditions, but the XC, which might be the name for cross country, I don't know, um, it's more than enough for any off-roading to be honest. For, for beginners and even advanced riders who want a bike that performs great on, on roads and great off-roading, on dirt tracks or gravel roads, whatever. This bike really does the job. It's a full recommendation from me and from guys I know who are a bit more experienced in the dirt. Now the seat height of this bike is 84 centimeters, which is high, not too high, but it is high. For shorter riders, there is a shorter and, and lower seat. Uh, the bike itself is very slim, so the seating height might not be that much of a problem, even if you're a shorter person. Um, for me, I'm six foot two. As you can see, it's actually the saddle is just below the crotch, and uh, it's okay. I don't have any problems handling the bike. Um, you do feel it's an off-roader. It has off-road performance. It's made for off-roading. This is just apparent in every detail of the bike. The bike itself has a dry weight of 205 kilograms. Um, and I have to tell you, it feels much lighter. At least 30 kilograms lighter than what it states. Um, part of this is because of the 21 inch front wheel, but it's also because of the slim chassis, the slim bike. Now this bike also has heated grips, which are nicely placed on your left grip. Um, it has three levels and in our conditions about 18 degrees Celsius, rainy. As I mentioned, I had some big cloud piss on me. Um, my gloves got wet and I did engage level one from the heated grips and in about 15 minutes my hands were warm and my gloves were dry. Now the ride itself, the saddle is quite firm, like on the 790 Adventure which I reviewed. Um, initially, if you're a sensitive person, it might hurt you, but after the day of riding, you are happy that the saddle is quite firm, because soft saddles tend to exhaust your butt muscles and hard saddles tend to get 
softer with time and warmer and this will keep your butt muscles, mu bleh, butt muscles relaxed <laughs> too much butt in my face altogether i fully recommend this bike to anybody who wants a bike that uh, has good off-road and on-road performance i really liked it the build quality is superb maybe even the best on the market at the moment i'm really not exaggerating when Chime continues to build such great motorcycles, I said to my neighbor, and I mentioned already, and I continue to review those bikes and ride those bikes, I might turn into a Triumph fanboy. Right now, I'm still not a fanboy, but it's this small of a gap before I turn into one. So, if you like the bike, give it a thumbs up. If you like me or my review, give it a thumbs up share it with your motorcycle friends leave a comment tell me what i did wrong and what i did great and yes subscribe stay tuned there are, there's more to come i even do car reviews but at the moment weather is great i concentrate on motorcycles this motorcycle was provided by motorrad dirnberger established in 1981 they've got decades of experience with yamaha triumph and ktm motorcycles as well as atvs Motorrad Dirnberger is located in the Bavarian city Kam, near the Bavarian forest and the Czech Republic border. They provide you with a ton of service around your motorcycle experience, including a workshop, motorcycle rental, new and used bikes for purchase and plenty of riding gear from a broad variety of brands. For my Czech viewers, there's also a Czech speaking mechanic. So stop by if you're nearby and have a look at their shop. And for now, this is it. See ya, catch you next time. Bye and thank you for watching.